Hello there, survivors. The year 2051 is coming to an end, which means that it's about time we have a bit of a rest, refuel our vehicles, and look back at all the adventures we had this year. Also, don't forget to reload the rocket launchers. It's important. In winter, the valley was invaded by a new ambitious faction riding flashy, sleek-looking vehicles, the Neon Dragon Syndicate. They brought a lot of new, dangerous, high-tech toys with them, like the Omni rolling-based chassis and the Kaiju Mega Cannon with unprecedented energy consumption requirements. Two tons of pure terror. Obviously, the newcomers had to come from somewhere, and soon inquisitive survivors discovered one of the Syndicate's abandoned bases, the deserted high-rises of the East Quarter. Neon signs, glass facades, kilometers of wires. If you squint really hard, you can easily imagine that this metropolis is still bustling with life. Speaking of life, or more precisely, the quality of it, Apart from countless little fixes and updates, we implemented a few small but very important quality of life changes. For instance, we added the ability to search for all vehicles posted to the exhibition by the same player. Furthermore, trees and bushes gained the ability to become translucent when survivors get too close to them. That's witchcraft for sure, but it's very convenient as well, so who cares? Before the winter was over, survivors also had a chance to fight it out in the traditional winter mayhem, featuring new blueprints for player vehicles and an updated system for leagues. Not to mention that there was also the first ever great race on a user-made track. In March, it was time to get some rest, if you were a survivor, of course. We the team kept toiling in the mines. We mean, working on some balance changes and an upcoming big update, which arrived at the end of the month. Run, you fools, it's the Drone Apocalypse! Crazy fights on a modified map, allowing every player to become a weaponized battle toaster or a fryer. As you know, drone battles are never far away from Easter egg hunts around your garage. Oh, while we're at it, survivors also uncovered a brand new garage designed by the Syndicate. It's pretty, there's no arguing about that, but it's also a bit scary to be in. What if Ravagers decide to come back? Another important thing is that it became easier to be more flexible in clan battles as we implemented a system allowing players to select a blueprint out of three before combat. Very handy. In April, green tracks and gray towers were already gathering fighters for the next part of their tournament, the Spring Mayhem. Updated designs, special maps, new rewards, just as we like it. In May, Stevo and his ravens came back to the valley bringing all sorts of exclusive parts already familiar to many survivors. The cool thing was that, as part of that event, you could craft fused parts with predetermined bonuses. Yep, just like with the Lost and Found Explosives workbench during the winter holidays. We barely had enough time to get good with crossbows again when it was already summer. And with it, we had a massive new season, Guiding Star, and a new battle pass. New cabins, weapons, movement parts, a new type of modules, recharge boosters, new perks for epic engines, a unique PvE mission with stealth mechanics and a Ravager boss, new cool contraptions for your ranges allowing for spectacular jumps, and that's without even mentioning the return of some old friends, the train plow in one very special graveyard. Why is there so much smoke here? <clears throat> In July, we reopened the Central Stadium to launch the new season of the Steel Championship. This year, the stakes were higher than ever as the rules were changed to allow you to destroy your opponents by smashing into them. Was it Paris and her violent tendencies that made that happen? Who knows? It was around that time when the warring clans of the Valley discovered yet another battlefield, Sinto City a post-apocalyptic, multi-layered metropolis. This was the first ever place in the wastes where you could initiate the base capture on two different levels. Finally, in August, we added an entirely new type of chassis, the frontal wheel, as well as the slaughter brawl, team fights with respawns and rules for accumulating points for frags, as well as the new season of the ranked matches in Survivor's League as well as lots of fixes, changes, and quality of life improvements. Oof, that was a busy time. 
All of that, though, was just a quick warm-up before autumn rolled in. See for yourselves. The triumphant return of the Founders with a new battle pass in tow. A new PvE mode, Operation Ashen Ring, where you had to defend an area with the help of special turrets you could build right in the field. The redesigned Old Town, the updated bridge, and Founders Canyon. Only Odagon knows how much oil and blood have been spilled on this dusty earth. It felt really nice to return to those iconic places in a trusty battle card. And that was just the month of September, by the way. In mid-autumn, survivors mastered the ancient art of planting and defusing bombs in the new unique sabotage mission, and did all sorts of crazy stuff with festive balloons in the traditional witch hunt. Ivy was unavailable this year, and so the main spooky event of the year was hosted by Seer AB. Made perfect sense, really. Thank God it wasn't Eric Stahl. We really hope that you didn't try to eat any tricky treats and got all the rewards you wanted. Closer to the end of the year, all you could hear in the wastes was the roar of the holy motors. We dropped a mountain of new exciting things, more than enough to make a new battle pass. New structural parts, new ways to destroy your enemies, New equipment, including a legendary cabin and a unique module that makes other parts more durable, as well as pretty unnerving customization kits. Ooh, <coughs> that certainly looks unnatural. Some people, though, couldn't get enough of those hydraulic pipes. Yes, we're talking about the new unusual PvP brawl, Operation Red Light. For the first time ever, survivors could play as the Ruthless Ravagers, and many of you were terrifyingly good at it. Feels like we can still hear screams coming from the updated Ashen Road. The brave warriors of the wasteland that retained their humanity were able to rediscover the fortress and the grassy plains around it. It was certainly the same old place, no doubt about it, but quite a few things happened to it while we were away. What's the deal with that military base, for example? On top of that, there were countless small changes, updates, and fixes. Sound design, game balance, client stability, you know, the things that are always on our minds. Speaking of balancing, late in the year we asked you to help us test a lot of many possible changes to the way different guns, cabins, and modules work. And thanks to your support, we managed to get a ton of useful feedback and lots of data in no time at all. We really appreciate that. Thank you, survivors. The new balancing changes are already out, as well as our traditional winter update with a new holiday look for your garages, a bonkers PvE mission, several brawls, and memorable prizes. Hope you have fun. And that's about it. At least for now. 2052 is coming and we have all sorts of crazy things planned already. But if anyone asks, we haven't told you anything. Thanks for being with us this year. Stay away from the sepulchre and close to your trusted allies, and happy holidays.